everyone. Last week we spent touring the Gaspi Peninsula. This is the place where Canadian history started. This is where a number of lighthouses were built to guide settlers. And this is where you can find hundreds of white-throated sparrows and juncos. And now we're back with Bromberg News. End of August, beginning of September is when I hit our local garden centers and nurseries. All the plants and flowers are, are liquidation or half price, so I can always find a great deal and save some of the native flowers that will probably end up just in the garbage. Remember, this is what happened last year. I saved a whole bunch of black eyed Susans and they did great. I just wanted to add a little bit of color to the edge of our property and I'm quite happy with the result. So this is my reminder for you. The planting season is not over yet so please go and check out your local gardens and rescue some of the native plants and plant them on your property i've just rescued a choke cherry it's not doing so well just yet but we'll see what happens next year A few weeks ago, Warren Otto sent me this rather disturbing article about hummingbirds being used as charms. Um, I sent the article to David and I asked him for his opinion. This has got to be one of the most abhorrent practices involving our birds that I've come across in my 45 years of studying them, making love charm necklaces out of the bodies of dead hummingbirds. Apparently it's not an uncommon thing in Mexico to have a hummingbird shot or otherwise trapped in nets or sticky lime spread in branches its body carefully dried for preservation and then packaged with red satin threads and either a Spanish prayer or an intended lover's name written on tiny paper. Sometimes they're wrapped in a photograph of a loved one, sprayed with that person's particular perfume, or covered in honey, flower petals, and or spices. The Spanish name for hummingbirds is colibri, but these charms are called chuparosas, which means flower liquor or flower sucker, and they seem to be quite popular among Hispanic people, even in the U.S. In earlier years, it was mostly women, young ones, that wore them, but now it's people of all ages. The hummingbird carcass goes for about $5 Canadian, and turning into a charm is about $20 more. In 2009, a National Geographic report revealed no less than 650 of them for sale in the markets of Mexico City, and now the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has been following the illegal trafficking of these charms into the U.S. The birds are fully protected under such laws as the International Migratory Bird Treaty Act, and their transportation across borders, dead or alive, is forbidden by the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. While the practice is nowhere near as threatening to declining hummer populations as habitat loss, urbanization, and climate change, the birds certainly don't need this added stress. Ironic, isn't it? These incredible little birds have always been associated with the culture of love as far back as the Aztecs, but surely there's a better way to express our love for them than this disgusting custom. Grackles are always given a bad rap. To be honest with you, I'm not too crazy about them. You know, they push all the birds away from the feeders, they bully, and they're generally not that nice. But it doesn't mean that they're not smart. Recently, the long-tailed grackle was added to the list of the smartest birds, right up there with parrots and jays and crows and ravens. These birds were tested using the Aesop's fable method when they were presented with a pitcher of water, which was filled to the level just below enough for the birds to reach. If the birds figured out that throwing stones or rocks into the pitcher would raise the level of water, they would pass the test, just like the crow did in the fable. Crows are still the fastest to solve this problem, but the long-tailed grackle was right behind. And also, apparently, if you approach them in the right way, they can be rather friendly. So maybe we should say hello to them instead of shooing them away. Climate change is always a hot topic, pardon the pun, and even though there are still many denies, every season is proof that climate is changing, whether we want to admit it or not. With the recent revelation of the damage that pesticides did to Europe's insects, which are a major food source for birds, the heat wave that Europe experienced this summer is even worse news for the birds. A bird sanctuary in Zurich has received a record number of starved birds that were being found in parks and 
by the roadside. Specialists explain this is happening because there's already a shortage of insects due to all the pesticides. But also with the hot weather, insects are forced to bury themselves further into the ground, making it really hard for the birds to find them. The sanctuary is doing all they can, but as they say, until serious measures are taken to ban pesticides, plant more native flowers and have everybody's lawns a little bit messier, things are not really going to improve for the birds. About four hours north of where I live here in Quebec, there is a place called Ile Gru, which translates to the Island of Cranes. This place is not only home to cranes, it also hosts over 200 bird species like the bobolink, the short-eared owl, Nelson sparrow, and the yellow rails, which are either endangered or of special concern in that area. Well, great news for the island. They just had another 92 hectares or 228 acres designated as protected by the Ministry of the Environment. This doubles the protected area, which means that the island will no longer be able to lose its status as a bird sanctuary. The local population will still have to work really hard to keep all the invasive species off the island, but with more protected area, conservationists say that it will be easier to protect the endangered species. What a photo contest we had! All the judges had the hardest time picking. Well, before I announce the winners, I want to let you know that on the next photo contest, we will be introducing some changes. So stay tuned. Now, let's check out the top five in public voting. And the winner is Tony Randazzo. Congratulations, Tony. Now the top five and staff picks, we have a tie there. And the two winners are Tony Randazzo and Debbie Foster. Congratulations. Next month is Migratory Birds, which we think is a little bit tough, so we thought we would give away a much larger prize, like our Brome Food Court, which consists of the Squirrel Buster Plus, the Weather Guard, the Pole Adapter, and the Seed Buster. Good luck, everyone. Well, this is all we have for you this week. Don't forget to hit those local gardens and nurseries to find some native plants for the next year. Take care, everyone.